Hello there, I'm Colin Wright. This is another Ask Colin segment, and today I have a question from Dermot Doherty that arrived via email, and the question goes like this. How do you allocate your attention? We all have a limited amount of attention, and what we give our attention to has a very significant impact on the quality of our lives, its meaning, and the legacy we leave behind. So what guideposts do you use in deciding what you give your attention to? Also, do you schedule your typical day, and do you use any system such as David Allen's Getting Things Done in organizing your tasks and life? Thank you very much for that question, Dermot. And as you rightly said, attention, like time and energy, is a very finite resource. And so it is ideal that we're intentional with the way that we apply it, the way that we expend it throughout our lives. I don't personally adhere to any hardcore time management system. I've tried many of them in the past, including the getting things done system. And I think there's a lot of value there potentially, particularly for individual projects. I do tend when I have like a crunch time situation and I've got a deadline coming up and I need to get something done quickly and I really don't want to do that thing. There's an app I use called Effortless that allows me to set up something like a Pomodoro sort of situation where I do a small amount of time, usually 15 to 20 minutes, where I just sit and I grind away at that thing I don't want to do. And then when the timer goes off, I can step aside. Usually at that point I don't want to because then I'm in the rhythm of things. But that sort of tool, that sort of psychological technique I find helps me in certain situations. But I don't use it every day. I don't use it for every project. The same is true with a lot of these other productivity sorts of programs and tools and applications. I think there's value in a lot of them, potentially all of them for someone. For me it doesn't really work. My setup is pretty simple. I use Gmail for my email, I use Google Calendar to keep track of my tasks and appointments and things like that. I've got a pseudo system within these tools that I use, these very simple tools. I adhere to something close to Inbox Zero where my inbox is kind of a to-do list. So when I finish something, I either delete it or archive it. Anything in my inbox is something I need to act on at some point. I don't always act on it immediately, depending on what else I'm up to. I try to prioritize accordingly, but that prioritization is mostly happening in here, not happening through some kind of external system. On that note, by the way, a lot of these sorts of productivity tools and programs do not require anything expensive. You don't have to buy a fancy app or software suite or a little Pomodoro timer or anything to keep track of this stuff. You can use tools you already have, the GTD, the Get Things Done system. You can use little index cards and a pen. And ideally, when you're trying these things out, that's exactly what you do, because that helps you get past that drive to consume and to buy stuff and to feel productive by buying new tools. That's a powerful force, and it's important that you recognize that part of your desire to use some of these tools might be down to the desire to consume and the optimistic hope that by simply owning these tools, suddenly all of your problems will be solved, which is almost never the case. Start with something simple, use tools that you've already got, and then if you find that Get Things Done or some other system like that really truly reshapes your life in an incredibly valuable and productive way, awesome, then invest in a better version of that tool. But give yourself some time first, because there's a very good chance you'll try some of these things out, spend a bunch of money on it, and then realize that it doesn't work for you, it doesn't stick for whatever reason, or you like some other system better. Now on the broader topic of how I allocate my attention and time more broadly, I'm cursed and blessed to be an incredibly curious and interested person. Absolutely everything is interesting to me in some way, shape, or form. And that means that it's very possible for me to get scattered if I'm not careful. And so I do try to give myself guidelines to make sure I'm not constantly being dragged in a million different directions simultaneously, unable to ever focus on just one thing at a time, and therefore spread too thin to ever get anything done or learn anything of note about any single topic. My policy with experiments, things that I undertake, various projects that I'm trying out to see if I want to turn them into more formal projects, is to do a set amount of research to give myself the time to look into all kinds of things on a regular basis. But then based on that initial research, 
if I decide I want to pursue it further, to give myself a milestone at some point in the future. So recently I decided I was going to learn to do crossword puzzles, which is something that I've always admired from a distance, never really got. I know a bunch of people, including my dad, who are just religious about doing their crossword puzzles on a regular basis. They really seem to enjoy it. I was never any good at it. I never really put any time into learning how to do it. I thought it might be fun to learn how to do it. So I did some initial reading on the subject, found out that the New York Times, they allocate the difficulty of their puzzles based on the day of the week, roughly starting on Monday, which is very easy, and then getting more difficult progressively through Saturday. I told myself, okay, if you really want to commit to doing some work and learning about and trying your hand at getting better at crossword puzzles, let's set the goal of making sure that you can do Mondays pretty easily, Tuesdays pretty easily, and then that you can struggle your way through the rest of the week, even if those don't necessarily come easy to you. So I didn't want to become a world grandmaster crossword puzzler, which would be a goal with very undefined endpoints and milestones, but I did want to become proficient enough that I could do the easy stuff easily easy within the context of this body of knowledge. Now, I didn't know how long that was going to take, so I also set myself the deadline of one month. I would then check in with myself, and then at that point, I'd try to decide if that initial goal still made sense, that initial goal being another milestone, at which point I will also check in with myself. So having those multiple touch points, sometimes chronological, sometimes based on what you want to accomplish, can really help in terms of projects like that where you're trying to increase your know-how, but also in terms of the acquisition of knowledge. In a lot of cases, the things you want to know, the things you want to explore, the things that you're curious about, you can learn a whole lot about those things if you learn how to use the tools that are available on the internet today within a very short period of time. I mean, it can be five minutes and you suddenly know 100% more than you knew before if you started out with no knowledge, but then shortly after that, give yourself half an hour and you will know more about that subject than 80% of the people on the planet. That's pretty cool. It is amazing that we are living at a time where that is possible, but it also means it's important that we take stock of our time and recognize that if we're constantly following all these little paths, we won't have time to invest even those five minutes or that half an hour in any single thing at any given point. It's whatever catches our attention in that moment that then distracts us and pulls us one way or another. So for me, it's important that I have time built into my schedule that allows me to take little bits of time here and there to check into things, to see if I want to pursue them further. And so that then I can expound upon those things regularly for the stuff that's only gonna take maybe half an hour, but then also within your larger schedule, if some of these things catch you in such a way that you want to learn more and more, that you want to increase your knowledge and your know-how past what you can learn over the course of a five minute or 30 minute research period. For me, it's largely gut based. Sometimes I'll take the time to learn about something completely unfamiliar, things that are more connected to other things that I already know I'm more likely to latch on to and invest a lot of time in because then I have a sense that something about that probably will be enjoyable and valuable to me. Learning about doing video work, for instance, connects to a couple of things I already do. I do a lot of audio work already and have for years, and the same with public speaking. This was kind of an easy decision to make because it fit within the other things that I'm doing in my life already. And with a few of the things, I felt I might have a natural advantage coming to it. In other cases though, sometimes it'll be something completely out of left field that you want to learn about. That was the case with crosswords. It was the case with Sudoku, which I decided to learn at some point as well. It was the case when I decided to pick up oil pastels and learn how to use those decently well. The gut check on this will be different for every single one of us. And so will the amount of time that we have to invest in these things. If your work and non-work life do not have a lot of time for additional explorations like this, you'll have to be a bit more stern with what you take on and with what you do not take on. You'll probably be more likely to have some fewer longer duration projects, but I would advise wherever possible, even if it doesn't seem like your schedule has a lot of give, to look for opportunities to work some of that malleability into that schedule. And that's true even if you're trying to be ultra productive and using like a GTD sort of system, trying to wring every last bit of value out of every single second of the day, it's incredibly valuable to make sure that you have flex time 
built into your schedule. It is psychologically healthful, but it's also helpful in making sure that you can try out new things, pursue avenues of exploration that might not lead anywhere, and so that you can rebuild things and adjust things in the future. If you do eventually discover something during one of these smaller journeys that you want to turn into a more lifelong pursuit.